Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei, in Beijing. This year marks the 20 years since China joined the World Trade Organization. No doubt the country's international trade has grown impressively over the decades, but even more significantly, it helps the world to understand how developing countries can learn and benefit from international rules and eventually bring new momentum to the mechanism. China's WTO membership is a milestone in the country's reform and opening up. As a junior trade official, Li Chenggang personally witnessed the moment when China formally joined the World Trade Organization 20 years ago. Today, as China's top envoy to the World Trade Body, he is working with counterparts in Geneva for more consensus on both WTO reform and a stronger post-pandemic recovery. 20 years already, Mr. Ambassador. China's entry into the World Trade Organization. How do you see it? China's accession to WTO is a historical event, both for China and the world. After the accession, China has enjoyed a relative favorable environment for its development. And China also provided the opportunities to the others all over the world. It is a mutual success mutual benefit and common development outcome. The past 20 years told us only when the world is good can China be good. And only when China is good can the world be better. China has grown from an offside audience to an important player on the WTO stage. Upon China's accession to the WTO, the then Director General Mike Moore remarked that with China's membership, the WTO becomes a truly world trade organization. In the past 20 years, China has grown from a lender and a follower to an active participant and a rule maker, making increasing contributions to the multilateral trading system. In the past 20 years, for those agreements, Richly in the WTO, China all made its own contributions. I can give you an example for the trade facilitate agreement. China played its role in the negotiation process, including in the last minute as a facilitator for the conclusion of the negotiation. China was the biggest contributor in the information technology agreement expansion negotiation in terms of the tariff reduction and the tariff revenue for God. China has been integrated into the world and benefiting the world through its opening up. As a member of the international community, China has always tried its best to contribute to international development and provided all parties with opportunities to share China's Dividend. China has become one of the engines to the global economic growth. In the past 20 years, China's annual contributions to the world economic growth averaged around 30%. Merchandise inputs increased sixfold and services inputs sevenfold. China also oh. remained the largest export market for ODCs for many consecutive years. Let me, let me also ask you about some of the important points because now, besides celebrating the 20 years that we are also facing a lot of uh, challenges, for example, the pandemic, the post-pandemic recovery, and also geopolitics, the MC12 has already been postponed. So, Mr. Ambassador, what do you make of the current uh, deadlock almost? Yes, the, the, the postponement of at the uh, MC12, it was a tough decision to make, but it was also a wise one. I think no matter what cases, people's health and life always come first. So uh, another reason was the Swiss travel restrictions and the quarantine regulations on people from some countries, which caused the, the concern of fair participation of the members. MC12 opens a window for revitalizing the WTO. 
before the announcement of postponement. They had already created very good momentum. Now our work in Geneva is still continuing. The discussions on all key areas are still kept on. In the head of delegation meeting on December 2nd, it was decided that we should finish the fishery subsidy negotiation and adapt to response to pandemic declarations, including the uh, IP, the intellectual property part, by the end of fe next February. So that's a, some kind of timeline. There are the two most, in, the, that two issues are most important deliverables among all people who are expecting for the MC12. Besides these two areas, China is also working with others on agriculture, WTO reform, including exploring possible steps to restore the active body. The, that's a part of the WTO dispute settlement mechanism. Mm. Mr. Ambassador, some of the key points you just mentioned are extremely crucial. Let me go through some of them with you, if you can, sir. On the vaccine issue, we have heard that the earlier commitment by the international community to have 70% of the population uh, by the middle of 2022 is impossible. So with a new coming variant, uh, people are becoming more desperate about where are we heading for? Are we going to have these vicious cycles over and over again? What kind kinds of discussions and the nature of discussions you have now within the WTO? For example, you yourself participated. Uh, actually, in the WTO, there are a lot of issues discussed now. I think the most important one is the response to the pandemic and the fishery subsidies. Developing members expect the, some kind of the deliverables on the intellectual property rights. It hope that kind of deliverable can help the developing members, including the less developing members, can successfully fight against the pandemic. But now, the views among members still far apart. Although some developing members already, already expressed the willingness to engage in the discussion. But till now, no any solution on the table. So we still keep going and keep in-depth discussion among the members, try to explore the, the possible landing zone, try to reach the consensus. I think under the pandemic situation, WTO as a trade organization, it should have a role, it, it should deliver some of the meaningful outcome to help the members. Mr. Ambassador, where does China stand on this issue? You know, now uh, in, the, in the WTO on the IP issue, now there are two pro proposals. One is from the India and the South Africa, uh, the developing members. They ask for the IP waiver, intellectual property waiver. Another is from the EU, um, at some, kind, some kind of proposal on the compulsory license. Now the two issues already under discussion, but from China's point of view, these two proposals are complementary rather than contradictory. And they could play equally important role in the fighting against the pandemic. Uh, against the such global pandemic, the lives of human beings should prevail. That's the China's uh, position. We will try to work uh, with the others, uh, try to, uh, uh, with a view to reach, to reach consensus. Another thing uh, about the WTO reform, sir. Where is China now, given that China's entry into WTO 20 years? Uh, we hear mixed voices about what China have achieved for the international community in that regard. So what about China's position now on reform of WTO, sir? Yeah, we have always believed that the WTO should undertake the, the necessary reforms, but the reform cannot be uh, accomplished overnight. 
any reform should adhere the, the, to the core values and the basic, basic principles of the multilateral trading system. Uh, China is an active participant and a contributor to the WTO reform. Uh, as early as in July, I think, 2018, China set up a Sino-EU uh, joint working group on WTO reform with the EU at the vice ministerial level to exchange views on the reform. In 2018, China submitted a position paper on WTO reform. In 2019, China further submitted a proposal. In the discussion on the possible uh, MC12 ministerial declaration, WTO reform is the most important part. Currently, the discussion is focused on how to revitalize the WTO functions, including negotiations, monitoring, and a dispute settlement. Among them, to ensure a well-functioning dispute settlement is a priority to China and many members. And we do hope discussions could be carried on in the coming year. China has actively participated in the WTO Joint Statement Initiative on Services Domestic Regulation and E-Commerce. And now the JSI Joint Statement Initiative is another approach try to make the WTO more relevant and more closely with the development of, of the world. So I think all the approach we are taking now is, a, is, kind, is kind of efforts among the members, try to make the organization can be uh, more successful. What about the uh, opinions among the big trading nations, such as China, such as the US, such as the EU? It's no secret that China-US relationship is a very in a very interesting period of time. So what would that mean, you know, Mr. Ambassador, for, uh, you know, China's contribution and the U.S. contribution in the discussion for WTO reform? Yeah, I think that China, the United States, and the, uh, the EU are the most important members of the WTO. The three members are biggest importers and exporters in the world, as well as important investment host and the receiving members. A predictable and stable global business environment provided by a role-based multilateral trading system are more critical to them. Besides, to address global challenges such as uh, cl climate change and COVID-19 pandemic, need WTO's role. So China, the US, and the EU have common responsibility in this regard. So on the one hand, we have different views, but on the other hand, we share the same objective. We share the, the common responsibility. We need to try to, try to explore the common ground on the WTO issues. That's, that's a responsibility should be taken by all the three important players. Mm. What, what is it like, uh, you know, your working relationship with, with your counterpart from the US, for example, from the EU personally? Uh, if you look at uh, our working relationship in Geneva, actually we, we share very good work, a working relationship with them. I can give you an example for the, for the WTO dispute settlement issue. Actually, we work with the uh, U.S. mission, the U.S. team, very closely. And we reach the consensus on that issue first, including the Russia, Russia team. Then based on that, we invite all the other members. Finally, we are very lucky. We reach a consensus on this tough issue. And with the EU, we already have some uh, very successful cooperation. For example, the, the domestic regulation uh, discussion and also on the other issues. Actually, we share, the, we share very good cooperation here. If you look at the world today, every country, every trading nation 
is facing the challenge of having domestic consensus. At the same time, geopolitics plays a big role as well. These are realities. So as China's representative to the WTO, which is a very much a hot cake right now, uh, what is it like for you, Mr. Ambassador, to work on a daily basis and to face the realities of both domestic consensus and the geopolitics? Yeah, I think uh, if we look at the, the experience of uh, after China's ever accession to the WTO, I think all of us witnessed the, the, the huge changes in China. I think China's rapid development in the past 20 years, apart from the hard work of the Chinese people, has largely benefited from our effective participation in international trade through the continuing opening up and the reform. This is the most real personal experience of my generation. From our own experience, we say trade is of great significance for creating jobs, improving living standards, and maintaining social stability. That's why most of the people in China of my generation are firm believers in multilateral trading system. That is also the reason we support the WTO necessary reform and hope it could fully and well functioning as people are expecting. However, we have to admit that there's an imbalance in the development of globalization and the trade liberalization. The greater gaps between the rich and the poor have left some free trade advocating country looking inward. So in the past years, the whole world has suffered unilateralism and protectionism. It tells us that, that only when all people could benefit from international trade globalization could get more support for the people. Globalization will continue. For China, as President Xi Jinping said, opening up is a hallmark of contemporary China. China will firmly safeguard the true multilateralism, multilateralism firmly share market opportunities with the rest of the world, firmly promote high standard opening up and firmly uphold the common interests of the world. So as a best to adapt to, I will do my best.